morning guys welcome back to another cook with us video today we're going to be going over um something i use we use all the time and it is zero point marinara this recipe is from the skinniest dish i'll leave her link down in the description but it is my favorite homemade recipe for marinara for your two ingredient dough pizzas we use it for our um, spaghetti, like our turkey meatballs and spaghetti. It is zero points. It is made from scratch. I mean, it's not like you picked the tomatoes from your garden. It's still canned, but I love it. We use it all the time. We make it, it makes a lot. So what we do is we, it's in a crock pot and we make it and slow cook it all day. And then we divide it up and then we freeze it actually. And it lasts for quite a while. We don't have to make a batch. I'd say the shortest time span in between them is maybe four weeks but usually we can get six weeks out of out of it all so her recipe is super easy to follow and again i said i will put her recipe link in the description but her recipe is just super easy to follow it's pretty much self-explanatory but so many people i see use jarred marinara and they have to take point hits on that and if you're like my husband andrew he's down to 24 points so that's not a lot of points and if you can cut points from somewhere, do it. So we're just gonna show you how easy it is to make her zero point recipe or zero point crock pot marinara from her recipe. And hopefully you'll try it out. I mean, it takes up very little, the way we do it, it takes up very little freezer space because we flatten it out. So really there's no reason not to other than time. And you do have to get up. It is an eight to 10 hour slow cooking process. So you kind of have to start it right when you start your day so we got up early this morning and we're gonna put it on um i'm gonna go put it on but um i will show you um we'll go into the kitchen and i'll show you all the ingredients and we'll get it started so i hope you like the video and welcome to our journey all right guys so this is what we've got for the zero point marinara in the skinniest dish put these ingredients on there for us we've got three of the large i think it's 20 to 28 ounce yeah, 28 ounce uh, cans of crushed tomatoes specifically. She says use, um, if you can, higher end brands, but this was literally the only brand there, so I think it'll work fine. I've used other brands and it works fine. I usually like to get the no salt added on everything so that I can control the salt, but again, beggars can't be choosers. So this is two cans of di uh, diced tomatoes, and this we will drain, these we will not. And then we've got about six to eight. I used a whole bundle of garlic because I like garlic and I've just rough diced that. And then a large yellow onion, which I've rough diced as well because we'll be blending it anyways. And then for seasonings, we've got crushed red pepper, just a tiny bit. And then we've got oregano, basil, and then a little bit of black pepper. So we're gonna be putting all of this in the crock pot to simmer on low for eight to 10 hours. You know, however long you've got, I think I've got at least eight hours i just know it takes a long time to cool if you're trying to freeze it or put it in the fridge so just keep that in mind that's why i'm starting this so gosh darn early this morning at 8 a.m so let's go ahead and get it into the crock pot All right guys, so this is what we're working with. It looks amazing. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this guy on. We're gonna do it for, let's start out with eight hours and see what I've got. And then we're gonna do it on low. 
<laughs> and there it goes. So I'm gonna give it a quick stir to get everything incorporated so that all the spices get in there. And literally I do a rough little shake of the red peppers. You can do more if you like it a little more spicy or zesty. Um, and then I just do again a little estimate of the black pepper because um, it's such a large quantity, it doesn't really go too far. But with the basil and the oregano, I legit do heaping two tablespoons because those flavors come through beautifully. And that's why she has you do it for so long on so low. <laughs> so long on low because then the flavors literally soak into every little bit of the tomatoes. It's awesome. And we don't like, <laughs> we don't like chunky tomatoes. So we do end up blending the whole thing and it becomes our pizza sauce, it becomes our spaghetti sauce, it becomes anything we want to for your marinara. It's it's awesome. I make this about every three to four weeks and it lasts me a lot of meals. So I'm excited and we'll get this simmering. So let's go ahead and uh, get the lid on. she's ready to go we'll see you guys in a few hours i'll do a mix about halfway through and show you guys what it's looking like all right so we're about halfway through with the eight hours we're at three hours and 50 minutes left which again you can do eight to ten hours on slot but i just wanted to show you guys what it looked like and this is not necessary to check like i just you can literally leave it alone for the full 10 hours or eight hours but i just want to show you guys what it kind of starts looking like which is pretty much the same as before, but you get the, the spices in it better and it's pretty thick. It's really, I smell, the whole house smells so good with this guy on. Like, it smells like we're at an Italian food place, which I guess that's the whole point is to have some homemade marinara and it is zero points for these items that we put in there. So yeah, we're at the halfway mark and we'll let it go for another at least the four hours and we'll check back in then all right guys so it's been eight hours with this marinara on the crock pot so we're gonna take a peek at it and then we're gonna blend it because we like it blended so if you like your marinara chunky you don't have to blend it as much but the recipe from the skinniest dish does recommend you to blend it a little bit because there's a lot of lot of tomato chunks or you know what if you like the big chunks of onion if you like the big chunks of garlic however you prefer it from here it's to your taste well the whole thing's pretty much to your taste if you have a preference but we don't like chunks of onions or tomato we're really picky with the textures of the stuff so we blend the whole thing and we have an immersion blender that we use um, I'll show you it real quick. So this is our immersion blender. This is probably one of my favorite investments in a kitchen tool I've ever made. Um, I We use this for our tomato basil soup. We use this for our black bean soup. We use this for the crock pot marinade. So we use this at least once a week. It is such a convenience because if you don't have one of these, then you'll have to actually um, spoon this out in smaller portions and blend it in a blender if you prefer our food processor. However, whatever machine you prefer to blend. And it's still pretty warm. We turned it off and it's, um, well, it was still closed, but I'll show you. But oh, it sm it, the whole house smells so amazing. So I'm super excited for this it smells delicious but see how chunky it is so really honestly we we blend it we blend it until it is smooth and it still has all the delicious flavors so we're gonna go ahead and blend it with our immersion blender if you want to blend it and you don't have one you can use a regular blender just do batches of it and then put it in containers so we're gonna go ahead and set it up to blend real quick All right guys, so this is how we like to blend it. It's relatively smooth. Again, there is still tomato-y and, and got relatively fine chunks in it. And you can still see some of the, the um, seasonings. It smells divine, but we don't like the giant mushy chunks of anything. So this is how it basically turns out. 
and I could tell it was starting to get done because I had that bit of froth at the top from the air being blended into it. So this is how we love it. it again, <laughs> it smells delicious. So now it's kind of the more difficult part, like it's super easy waiting all day for it to be done. And now we've got to cool it down in a relatively normal hour of the day, considering this was eight hours in the crock pot. And then it's going to take a little bit of time to cool down. So we like to separate it and it cool down, cools down quicker in smaller batches. So I'm going to be putting these into to like Tupperware containers to go containers to cool down and then I will bag up each portion portion to freeze. So I'll go ahead and show you guys how we do that. So as you saw, I used a one cup measuring cup and I got two cups into each container. And yes, unfortunately, I will have to clean these out after these cool down, but it's from doing this about three or four times, this is the easiest and most efficient method I found to cool it down with a reasonable hour. Like I'm not gonna sit here with the crock pot trying to cool it down for another eight hours that it cooks. So it does take a ton of time to cool down if you're leaving it in the crock pot which is still hot. So we, as you can see, I put them two cups in each container and we've got seven. So if two cups is your serving for a meal, you'd get seven servings out of this. And I'll go ahead and show you what we've got down here. We will let this cool for the next hour or so at least, because then we will be putting them in quart size baggies and freezing them. This is the key to storage and to keeping it for as long as we're able to keep it. So anyways, I'll let you go. We'll let this cool and we'll be back in about an hour or so. All right guys, so it's been sufficient amount of time for the marinara, which is right here, to cool down. We're gonna go ahead and put them into the baggies. So for this guy, we'll keep this guy for in the fridge. But so we're gonna do six quart size baggies. So we'll get that all baggied up. All right. Ta-da! As my husband just said, <laughs> these are all bagged up in so two cups per quart baggie. And now the trick is to save space in your freezer is to lay them flat. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay them flat. This one's gonna go in the fridge for our meal this week. But yeah, let's lay them flat and I'll show you how if you put them in the freezer this way, it works. All right, so that's basically how you do it. Um, of course, they're not frozen right now, so they will wiggle and wobble and try to slide off. But once you get them in the freezer and they start to freeze and then they get frozen, they'll be super easy to move about. So if possible, choose an area in the freezer where it won't be squished by anything else so that it can get its flat form first. And then see, like it's trying to slide off. Oh no. But yeah, once they're frozen, they're super easy to do with, but you just gotta get them frozen first. So we're gonna go ahead and put these in our freezer for the next few weeks. I'd say at least maybe one a week. So this is seven weeks of, if not more. So that's pretty awesome. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little how-to. I know I've said it before, the skinny ish dishes recipe is so easy to follow. I just kind of wanted to make a video to prove how easy it is to follow and how great it turns out. So please go ahead and try it. It's awesome. Again, the link for her recipe is down below. She has a lot of amazing, amazing Weight Watchers friendly recipes. We use them all the time. Shout out to her. I love her Instagram. It's the same name, the skinny ish dish. Um, so yeah, if you guys try this recipe, tag her tag me let me know what you think of the flavor i love it but i'm also not like a pro i'm not a chef i'm not a sauce connoisseur i don't know just leave me a comment down below what you think if you've never tried it before if you want to try it just let us know so again i really hope you uh, enjoyed the video and yeah we will see you in our next video